I don't see many movie comedies. Most movie comedies don't do much for me, to be honest. Oh, what can I say? Different strokes, you know. I just, I, everything I've seen from it makes it look like something that I would have much interest in seeing. So I just, I've never watched it. Hear my iPhone going nuts. Funny you should mention Rodney Dangerfield. I just uh, I didn't watch it, but I had it on while I was working uh, last night. I, w I had put on uh, Back to School. Oh, you got it printed up. Yeah, I like Back to School. I like it a lot. It's got a lot going for it. Uh, and for some reason, I always forget that Robert Downey Jr. is in it. So when, I, when he shows up, it's like, hey, Robert Downey Jr. And it's got Danny Elfman in it, which is kind of cool. Actually in it, not just writing the music for it. Oh, yeah, Sam Hansen, too. Yeah, the, the, the film's got a lot uh, a lot going for it. Sally Kellerman, Terry Farrell, Dax from DS9 is in it as the too tall girl that uh, the son likes. And Kurt Vonnegut, yep, true. With one of the biggest laughs in the movie, in my opinion. <laughs> That well, both that both him showing up and later on with Rodney talking to him on the phone. <laughs> yeah, Terry Farrell plays the the girl, the quote unquote girl in the movie, and she's uh, about a foot taller than uh, I forget his name, the guy who plays Rodney's son. But they don't even try to hide it. They just like uh, you know, in, there's there are two shots with him and her, and it's like wow. Uh, <laughs> She's a lot taller. Yeah, well, he was on the phone, and 
um, he said something to Rod, uh, to Kurt Ronnie that I, I won't repeat on my art cast because it's a family friendly show. But uh, Kurt Kurt wrote the essay on his own book, and the professor gave him a bad grade. <laughs> Ronnie chewed him out for it. Yeah, well, I go Bowling God. That's right. Well, Elfman wrote the wrote the score for the film, and he shows up in a cameo during one of the, the during the big party scene too, playing Dead Man's Party. Oh, no print yet. Oh, well, uh, let me know how it turns out. I was that, you know that, I, I was actually really happy with how that one turned out. I think that that one is probably second to the uh, the Aliens piece I did for Sean, uh, in terms of satisfaction from the. From me. I can look at it and not and not go, oh, why did you do that and that and that? Whoops, did that backwards, didn't I? It's black, it's the yellow one black. Oh well, you're getting black on yellow. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, oh, thanks, Evan. I, I, I like Danny Elfman as a composer, but for, for the most part, there's a couple of exceptions. For the most part, um, I don't like him doing superhero movies because they all tend to sound very Batman-ish. Although I do like, I think Dick Tracy is one of his best scores, to be honest. Um, he did that right after Batman. Maybe maybe that's why I don't mind it so much because he, he was probably intentionally trying to not do redo Batman. But when I I thought it was all wrong for Spider-Man. Completely wrong for Spider-Man. It, it sounds it. His Spider-Man score sounds like a Batman score to me. I liked his uh, Pound of the Apes uh, score too. I think he was. I think he upped his game a little, competing with Jerry Goldsmith's original score, which uh, is still one of the great film scores. I think because of the, the interesting instruments he used and his his take on the on, on the uh, compositions. I don't know why the I mean, Danny Elfman stuff uh, overall I, I love, but sometimes it all sounds derivative of either the the uh, Pee Wee Pee Wee Adventure soundtrack, which I I love, or the Batman soundtrack, which I also love. Um, and for some reason it bothers me with Elfman, but it doesn't bother me with somebody like uh, John Barry. John Barry, every single one of his scores sounds the same to me, but I love them. He uses a lot of the same chord progressions. You can, like, put them next to each other, and it's like, whoa, that's the same thing, but just different, a different melody applied on, onto it. But uh, I love John Barry. Uh oh, oh there's. 
I'm moving a little slow tonight. I'm not feeling so so well today. Not sick, just uh, just feeling sluggish. So don't worry, I'm not getting any germs in your drawings or anything. But I do feel a little. I think I ate something bad. I don't know what's going on. I just feel a little slower today. Speaking of film scores, I uh, I loved the score to Tron Legacy so much. I got the uh, the soundtrack, and then I sought out some of uh, Daft Punk's you know non soundtrack stuff, some of the original stuff, and uh, it's really I think the power of uh, film that and the combination of images and the music. I I wouldn't listen to their other stuff <laughs> to save my life. It just doesn't. It's that's just so. It's amazing to me that I, I love the score so much. What did I say? Did I say Daft Punk? Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, I would. I need to see it uh, uh, again to say I love it, but I, I sure did like it. And this is coming from somebody who thinks the original Tron is boring. Now it comes out, I think, April 5th. But uh, I'm I'm probably gonna buy the uh, the Blu-ray that has both the original Tron and uh, the new one, just so that I can have the have the um, <laughs> what I referred to it the other night. The original Tron is like the tech manual you have to read to enjoy the sequel. <laughs> I'm very excited there's going to be sequels. In fact, uh, a 10 minute video just hit the web of some new stuff. I'm sure Disney, Disney leaked it on purpose, but it's going to be on the Blu ray and it shows some stuff uh, that happens before Tron Legacy and some stuff that happens right after Tron Legacy. So, it's going to be really cool. Oh, the cartoon looks great too. Yeah, I love that, that they're, that, that, you know, they're, it's not, I love the idea that they're going to keep going you know because it I don't think it was a huge hit um, so it makes me happy that they're they're gonna keep mo moving forward with the uh, the series and expand on the mythology because uh, I'm in now I'm in like Flynn ha <laughs> ha But uh, I thought it was a, a beautiful. the The effects work is flawless, in my opinion. I, I I can't believe it wasn't nominated for visual effects. That's just insane. Apparently the animated series is going to be like a ten-part series, so it's going to be finite, which I like. The idea that it's not just going to be, hey, let's you know put out a, a cheap animated series to cash in on all this. It's going to be, a, you know, they clearly it's going to be a planned thing, and they've got some uh, big names attached. So it sounds like they're they're doing it, you know, with the idea of having it 
tie in and not just be a, a cash in. Oh, Sean, by the way, I, um, I think I've got five of the roughs for the Batman series already done. Um, I'm going to send them to you, obviously, tomorrow. I'm probably going to change. I did the what I told you about with regard to Batman, but I might do something different now because I didn't like how it turned out. It, Batman looked too passive. Robin.